Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be making an in-game video on the Vancouver position. Recent videos I've made, the feedback has been you definitely want to see more in-game tactics videos. So that's exactly what we are going to do over the next two months. Planning to do about two to three videos per week until November 1st. Uh, you may have seen the news November 1st just announced is going to be the candidates tournament being resumed. So Canada's tournament earlier in this year was cut off halfway. Exciting tournament, but with all the craziness going on in the world, they did postpone that until November 1st. So uh, plan on making a lot of in-game videos until then, but it's all based on feedback from the audience. So if you wouldn't mind, you do like this content, feel free to hit that like button. let lets me know that you like this type of content. Also, feel free to let me know in the comments if there's any type of in-game you're looking uh, for me to cover. I think Rook and Pawn in-games are very fun uh, to, to go over and to learn from. But if you want to see Pawn in-games, uh, Queen versus Rook type in-games, uh, Minor Piece in-games, any of that, just let me know in the comments. I'll definitely take that into consideration. So in the Vancouver position... Uh, it's going to be set up similar to this. Doesn't have to be exactly this. Hopefully, at the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of conceptually how to play this, not necessarily just memorizing uh, moves. Although in the end game, much of it is understanding very specific moves. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is you want to have this rook on one side of the board as well as the king near this eighth rank, and your opponents. Uh, you can see here that they have a rook and pawn. And while they are up of material, black can actually draw this game. Now, I know many of you uh, like to watch a video and say, how can I win? But sometimes chess isn't always about winning. It is about coming out with the best outcome. And in this case, black down a pawn and material. And the white pawn about to promote here to the eighth rank. Black definitely should be playing for a draw. And they can do that if they play correctly. But definitely needs to make sure that you have the right setup. So the first thing is with the rook here on this side of the board, that it can freely attack this king that we'll go over, and also the king near the 8th rank. You also want to make sure that the pawn here is has not reached the 7th rank yet. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for black to draw that game. We'll go over both of those and why that is the case, and then we'll dive into this position specifically. First, we'll look at why white would win if the pawn is already on the seventh rank. And that is, let's say it's white's move. Uh, now, I've already done a video on a queen versus rook in game. So if white's feeling pretty confident in their skills, they could play rook here to g8. And after the king takes, pawn to a8. And this is going to promote to a queen here. And so white should win this game. Not an easy end game by any means. And white definitely has a better option, a uh, much easier option. Uh, and that is just to play something like rook to c8. It doesn't really matter how black continues. Uh, they can't come to c6 and check the king here. But if they want to play rook to f4, the king's just going to come up to the pawn. There's no way to stop this. Rook to f5, check. Uh, king to b6. Rook here to f6, check. Uh, but then eventually after rook to f7, just rook to c7, stopping that. There's no way for black to hold on. White should go on to easily win this game. And now we'll look at even if the pawn is on the sixth rank here, what happens if the king is not near this eighth rank? Well, white can just play rook here to g8, and then let's say king to h4. And the reason h4 and not uh, f4, white's not trying to continue to, to check this king. And so uh, black wants to potentially be able to freely check uh, this king here, and if the king is here on f4, uh, that would block some of the squares that this rook could go to. But it doesn't really matter too much. That's not in white's plans. After the king moves either way, then the pawn's going to push forward to a7, and there's no way for black to stop this. If black tries to just check the king all day long, then eventually the king's going to come up here to the 8th rank, and it's next to the pawn, and there's just nothing that black can do here. Uh, Black's going to have to just take this pawn, or this pawn's going to promote to a queen here on a8. Which brings us back to this original position, and it's white's move. Now, white has a few options here. We've already looked at something like g8, but that doesn't work because the king, as we mentioned, is protecting this. So king to 
G8, just taking that material. Well, black's going to go on to, to win this game here. So white's not going to do that. So they're either going to push the pawn forward to A7, because if they move the rook to anywhere, then this rook on uh, F6 is just going to take that pawn. So they're probably going to play A7, or they're going to move their king to B5 and try to get their king involved into the action. So let's look at both of those. Make sure you understand what white could do and then how black should respond. So A7 is going to get met by rook to A6. Now this is crucial because in this position... White can't really do much. If this rook moves anywhere, it doesn't matter. We've already talked about if the rook moves to g8, it's just going to fall to the king. That'd be a ridiculous move. But if it moves anywhere, rook to d8, well, then the rook's just going to take here on uh, a7. So let's say that the king starts to get involved into the action with king to b5, attacking the rook. Well, the rook can just swing back to a1. Now, eventually, the, the king can start to march down here to uh, this rook and start to attack it, but Black has an easy response. So let's say king to b4. We could see check. King to c3. Black just comes back to a1, protecting this a file. This is the, the critical thing that black is trying to do here. It doesn't matter too much about the king. It's not a threat right now. As soon as it becomes a threat, king to b2, then black can play rook to a6. Same as before, you can see white's moved his king a bunch, but it hasn't really done anything. Black is still stopping all of the threats. As soon as the rook moves, the pawn is going to be captured. So we've looked at the pawn coming to a7 and why that doesn't work for white. So let's take a look at the next option. That is the king getting involved. So king to b5. Uh, now black really needs to continue to check this king if it's in a threatening position. And by threatening, I mean it's over here connected to these pieces because it's adding a lot of support. And so it needs to be put under attack. If it's not over here, if it's in like the center of the board, then black could just maintain control of this sixth rank right here because the rook can't really move too much. And if it does, then the pawn just gets captured. And if the pawn ever pushes forward, then the rook can just swing here to a6. So king to b5, and then rook to f5 check. King to c6, rook to f6 check. And then white has two options. Could either retreat the king back here to b7, or b5 if it really wanted to, but let's say b7, or it could play king to d5 and just trying to get closer to the rook. So let's first look at king to b7. Now, what's nice about this position from black standpoint is the king can never be, be get behind this rook or the pawn. It's very different than if the rook or the pawn, if they were on the b file or the c file, because the king could just easily slip behind them and hide out, and the king could not get under continuous checks from black. But because they're on the A file, the king can't do that. So black can pretty much just check the king all day long. There's no way for white to stop this. Now, if we come back and say after rook to F6, what if the king starts to come closer to the rook? Now rook to or king to D5, rook to F5 check, king to E6, rook to F6 check, and then king to E5. Now, we can't continue to check our opponent, and that's fine, because rook to f5 and rook to e6, our boat's just going to get our rook captured. But the king here on the e-file, it's not really a threat anymore. We've kind of neutralized it by bringing it towards the center of the board, and now we can play rook to b6. Now, white still can't play pawn to a7, because we're just going to play rook to a6. We already saw that that doesn't win for white. White still can't play his rook anywhere because we're just going to capture this pawn here on a6. So maybe the king comes to d5 and says, okay, I definitely need to attack, but then just rook back to f6. Now, white does have an interesting move at this position where they could play king to d4. And this is where you have to remember if the king is just in the center hanging out, it's not really a threat, then you could still play just rook to b6. You're maintaining all the the threats and defense that you had before, you don't want to fall into a trap, which this would be, of playing rook to f4, saying, okay, I remember that I have to check. Well, you have to check if your opponent's king is in a threatening position. King here on d4 is not a threat because from here, they can play king to e5, attacking the rook. And this is a losing position for black. And even if you look at it and say, well, yeah, you could just bring the rook back here to f6, 
Then, if they're playing this in-between move here on d4, trying to trap you, then they also probably know that they can play the very nice move of rook to g8. And black doesn't have a lot of good options. If they take the rook here on g8, well, then the rook here on f6 is going to fall. If they play king to f7, well, then we can kind of force their hand because rook to f8, now they almost have to take, and we take their rook if they don't. They move their king anywhere, then we're just going to take the rook here on uh, f6. And if they decide something like uh, king to h7, okay, well, now the rook's just hanging here on f6. None of that's going to go well. So as we come back, we can see that there's just no reason to play rook to f4 check. Instead, black can just play rook to b6. Now king to uh, c5, no other option works. We've already looked at a7 many a times. If the rook moves, we just capture the pawn here. So king to c5, rook back here to f6. What are they really going to do here? Maybe since they've seen the pawn pushing forward doesn't work, maybe they get the rook involved. Rook to a7, uh, check, but we can just bring a rook here to g6 behind the rook. Uh, they don't have any more threats, so uh, they also recognize that they need to move the rook out of the way to move the pawn. They can't move it along the seventh rank because then they just lose the pawn. So rook back here to a8. Uh, we just bring our king back here to c g7. It doesn't matter too much. What are they really going to do? And any time that they just play a7, we just play rook to a6. It's not going to win for them. So that is the Vancouver position. Uh, definitely enjoy going over rook and pawn endgames. They just happen so frequently. It's good to understand how not only you can execute yourself, but also if you end up in a position where you're you're down a pawn or you're down some material and you're figuring out like, oh my gosh, I wish I could just draw this game. I don't want to lose. It's always good to understand in-game theory. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Also, not only if you've subscribed, but hit that notification bell because I will be creating a lot more content in the next two months. Want to make sure that you don't miss any of the videos I'm making. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next video in just a few days.